is the Canon G7X Mark III the new best vlogging camera for 2019? Guess we better find out. Hello folks and welcome to a video that has been a long time coming here on the channel and if it goes as well as I hope it's going to go we could be about to set the new bar for the perfect vlogging camera. For the last two years at least it's been this, the Canon G7X Mark II. It's just about as good as it gets for a point and shoot vlogging camera but it does have its limitations and those limitations have all been addressed on the new Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III. We're gonna unbox this and we're gonna put it through its paces, particularly testing out the three headline new key features. The fact that it films in 4K, the fact that it can live stream directly from the camera onto YouTube, and the fact that it now has its very own mic input. These are all things that we've been crying out for for a long, long time. Let's have a look to see what's in the box. So this is the box. I've gone for the black one, which looking back, I kind of wish I'd gone for the uh, for the shiny new grey one because it will make it look a little bit different from the Mark IIs that I already have. But at least this way, you know, it's, it's going to look like all the other cameras. That was my thinking behind going for this one. How do we get into this box? There we go. Into the box at the bottom here. Let's see what we have hidden away in this little package. So we've got all of the instruction leaflets and bump and stuff like that as you would expect in a camera box obviously we're not worrying about any of those we have a power cable we have the little charging block thing which looks identical to the one for the uh, for the g7x mark ii i hope it is because that would be very convenient because then i can use all of the batteries that i have for that camera with this one i'll double check that and just to confirm whether it is the same battery but it will be very very handy if it is especially for everyone like me who already has the predecessor to this camera there is the battery it looks very familiar i don't know how close to charged up it's going to be but there we have the battery we have the little hand strap no one's going to use the hand strap thing and then the main event the camera itself which looks pretty much exactly the same as the G7X Mark II did from all angles apart from where is it where is it this crucial angle here which is where we have finally a mic input on a Canon G7X that that on its own is a game changer that would have been enough the fact it can also shoot in 4k as well and live stream directly from the camera means that you can plug an external microphone in get it linked up to youtube wirelessly and use it to live stream with fantastic proper camera quality video and proper audio as well from a proper microphone so i don't see how they can miss with this unless it just doesn't work this has got to be a hit Let's uh, let's get it up and running and test it out. So there it is, side by side with a G7X Mark II. Should we get the muff off the top for now? This one is a little bit battered. This was my this was my very first vlogging camera. You can see it's held together by tape at the moment. This isn't actually the one I use now. I'm filming this bit on new. This is the other G7X Mark II that I've got. But you can see if you put the cameras lined up together, it is pretty much identical to its predecessor weight wise feels about the same one thing i have noticed is on the top there where the microphone is um, i know it's got an external mic so it's less of an issue but on the mark ii there was two mics like that and you could get these muffs that would fit around it a little bit of velcro and you could put that on the top as like a wind muff i've got some of these now they're from micro muff if I just have a look at how the velcro bits fit on I don't know if it's going to fit on the new one it looks like it was going to cover up a little bit of that microphone which oh no it does fit it just fits so I should be able to get that sufficiently wind muffed so that when I'm using it without the external mic it uh, it isn't absolutely awful when I'm out and about but if we get it turned on this is what it looks like, so exactly the same kind of setup as the G7X Mark II. 
Let's see what 4K looks like. So time for a comparison then. This is the G7X Mark II. So this is 1080p, just pretty much of all the settings set to auto, which if you're a lazy vlogger like I am, who doesn't really understand how cameras work, you tend to leave things pretty close to auto as much as you can, because then it's easy just to pick the camera up and start vlogging, rather than messing around with settings and missing the shot. So this is 1080p on the Mark II, and this is 4K on the new Mark III. What do you think? It, you can't do this on full auto. I had to go into the movie settings. There's a lot of things I've been able to put on auto in there, but it doesn't let you just flick to 4K and leave it on full auto the way I always left the previous camera on full auto. But we're getting it in 4K, so is it better? Do we care if it's 4K? Can you even see in 4K? Let me know down in the comments. Well, I've just come out to a particularly windy spot to try and show you the benefit of the external microphone. So this is the new camera, still in 4K mode, with an external microphone on. Couldn't have the windsock thing on there because it blurred half of the screen like this. I think I've recorded a little clip that shows that. So it's quite a windy day, as you can see from the, the trees behind me. It's gonna rain soon. It's been raining, but this is with the external microphone on. And to show you the difference that it makes, if I pull that out. So we're now on the onboard microphone. Theoretically, this should sound all windy and horrible and rubbish. Now, obviously, if this was a camera I was gonna use constantly without an external mic, which to be honest, it probably will be when I'm vlogging with it. I can't imagine I'm gonna take this weird mutant rig that I'll show you in a minute out when I'm vlogging, but I would, put a, I would put one of those little muffs on it again, so it's probably a little bit worse than it ordinarily would be. Let me put the microphone back in, because I imagine this sounds awful. So there we have it again with the, uh, with the proper microphone back on. If you want to know how this looks, it does look pretty dumb. If I just show it on the other camera. So I've just got this little bracket thing at the bottom on top of the tripod. You can just see it under there. That was like a fiver off of Amazon, but just allows the camera to have a separate thing hot shoe next to it because there's no hot shoe attachment on this camera which is probably the one thing that I would like to see changed for a Mark IV as it stands right now it would be nice to keep everything they've added for this one but add a hot shoe mount on the top of the camera and then it really would be the perfect vlogging camera which I'm already getting wet in the rain it seems Back home, still on the new camera, still with the microphone set up. The, le the last big new headline feature that I wanted to have a look at is live streaming, as I mentioned before. Now, obviously I can't test live streaming as part of a video. What I am gonna do though, on at some point over the weekend, let's say Sunday, maybe, don't hold me to it, just keep an eye on the channel. There's a reason to subscribe and have your notifications turned on. But at some point over the weekend, instead of a normal daily vlog out at five o'clock, it will be a live stream set up on this camera like this, because I am led to believe that I can just have this set up with the microphone, with the camera in front of me. It can wirelessly connect to YouTube, stream directly from the camera. And theoretically, we should be able to live stream with this picture quality, this sound quality, and also the ability to just pick it up, move it around and wander around the house. That's going to be a very, very different kind of live stream from anything we've ever done before. And the prospect of being able to do that is pretty exciting. Now, being the clickbaity YouTube monster that I am, I would have no doubt called this video something along the lines of the best vlogging camera 2019. So I suppose as part of the video, I should decide if it is. I. I don't see how it can't be. If we just compare it to some of the other options and compare the features that this has, um, we've obviously got the traditional Casey Neistat style Canon 80D on a Gorilla Pod with a massive mic on the top. It's the one I'm using right now. It is great. Picture quality is awesome. Sound quality is incredible because of the external mic, but it only films in 1080p. There's no 4K on the, 10, on the Canon 80D. It costs for the full setup, for the camera, the lens, the microphone, the tripod, you're looking at something, something in the region of 1200, 1300 pounds, twice the price of the G7X Mark III. And it's really big and heavy. There is no coincidence that I've been vlogging for a couple of years and for a couple of years, I've had shoulder problems. It's a big, heavy piece of kit. And I guess it's now been surpassed for picture quality. 
I did say this kind of stuff though when this came out. This is the Canon 80D. This is previously the only other vlogger's camera in the Canon range that could film in 4K. And I thought this was perfect when it first came out. It's a smaller camera than the Canon 80D. It's a lighter camera. As I say, it can film in 4K. It still has the mic input so you get the good sound quality. It is a great camera. The one issue with this is when you film in 4K, you get a massively cropped picture. You need to have a super, super wide lens on this camera to take account of the huge crop that you get when you go into 4K. And it actually meant that I never bothered using it in 4K because I just used the uh, the lens that was bundled in it, which is a 15 to 45 lens. And it just didn't go wide enough to accommodate the huge crop you get for filming in 4K. So although it can do 4K, I never did 4K. So for this, I used this while my ATD was being repaired and never really used it since. The vast majority of our vlogs, during the two years of the channel have been filmed on one of these two, my two trusty Canon G7Xs. These are great, they are, they're good quality. They're not as good quality as the ATD. They still only film in 1080p. There's no way to plug in an external mic, so sound quality, especially in a busy convention hall or a windy beach, would always be a bit iffy on one of these, but you couldn't beat the fact that it just folds up, can go in your pocket, and you can take it anywhere with you and that was always the reason why this was super convenient add into that the fact that this is 600 pounds half the price of the ATD and that's why this for a long time has been the vlogger's favorite and as far as I can tell the Mark III has just taken everything that was good about this and improved on it in every way without increasing the price. You're still looking at a 600 pound camera, so half the price of the Canon 80D that can now film in 4K without a crop. Crucial difference over this one. If you want to, you can still have it fold up nice and small, go in your pocket, or if you're looking for absolute top quality and are willing to have a bulky bit of kit, you can use the little bracket thing that we were using when we were out at the park before and have the external mic on there next to it and really improve that sound quality plus the live streaming features that means really for the first time ever for me I'm going to be able to do live streaming the way I want to do live streaming with proper video with proper audio with the option to move around not stuck to a desk where my webcam is and where my proper microphone is or having to compromise on one of those other things plus I've not even mentioned the fact that it can film portrait natively so if you want to use it for your Instagram stories you can do it to you do your Instagram stories and I mean it's just a uh, what a piece of kit. Unless this falls apart and breaks after like three weeks, I don't understand how it could possibly be anything but the best vlogging camera available in 2019. If you've got 600 pounds, you wanna start vlogging, you wanna buy the best vlogging camera you can get for 600 pounds, I don't see how you can look beyond the Canon G7X Mark III. And this wasn't an ad. As you can see, I, I've spent thousands of pounds of Canon over the years. I wish it was an ad. I just love their stuff and this camera I think is probably the best thing they've ever done for me as a vlogger I know the DSLR purists now hate me but I am going to wrap this review video up there hopefully you have enjoyed it and got something out of it if you have any questions or you want me to look at any of the bits of it in more depth let me know down in the comments and keep an eye out on the channel over the next few days for this thing making its live stream debut I hope it lives up to the hype but really, just the microphone thing. That was enough. I would have spent the 600 quid just for the mic jack, the 4K and the live stream. They're just a bonus. So if you have enjoyed it, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for more daily vlogs and the very occasional tech review like this one. And thank you very much for watching.